Delicious is really about, well, it's about the women, for a start. It's about four generations of women and how they rub along together. And it's about how they learn to accept each other, how they love each other and how they forgive each other. It's not easy being your mate, Gina Benelli. There ought to be a word for what we are, like a worsty. <laughs> Some people think ambition is a dirty word, but I couldn't disagree more. It's the only thing that separates the doers from the talkers, the successes from the failures. My dishes have been in my family for six generations. I could make any one of these dishes blindfolded in 15 minutes. I'd like to see you try. I bet you would. Well, mainly there is a, a new character called Mason, who um, is a rival chef. So what brings you to Cornwall? I'm here because I was invited. Invited? By who? Your business partner. Mason is a charming, charismatic, handsome rival chef to Gina, who Sam invites into their lives as a potential investor for the Penrose, little realising what havoc that he is about to create for Gina and Sam. Mason handles food and he handles a restaurant in a very different way to Gina. Gina's actually not very interested in the business of a restaurant, she's interested in the food. Maybe a bit more salt. You know, I've killed for less than that. <laughs> When you've got a heavyweight like Mason Elliott on your patch, and that's the premise for Mason's arrival, and it's how Gina and Sam cope with the arrival of this, this slightly enigmatic character. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? What does he want? I thought he might be interested in investing. Oh, that man does not invest. He devours. Gina is interested in the man himself. He's quite... Um, Handsome. What can you do with the varnish and the wind? He's a challenge for Gina, and she likes a challenge. You ruin my day, I ruin yours. This is my life. I'm not playing. Food is at the centre of this series because it's not just food. It's about feeding and nourishment and love. I mean, I've never, ever seen anything like it in my life. Sometimes I come onto this set in one of these banquet scenes. And it's so beautiful. I mean, it really is like a work of art. Her way to make everything all right is with food. And sometimes she masks her pain with it. And I think sometimes she's replaced her feelings with cooking, um, which has made her supremely good at cooking because all the love has gone into the pans. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> I love that. Thinking that means I'm this is all the way through to the end. Here we go. Unless it goes wrong. Unless it yeah. goes wrong, of course. Yeah. Action! With my pumpkin and amaretto sauce, Teresa. Yep, nearly there. Something's burning. Oh. Okay, don't panic, I've got this. Ah. Stop there, please. Help, please. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. At the heart of it are four women um, at very different stages of their lives and through them themes of love, friendship, parenting, grandparenting, sex, trust, fun, are all explored. So it covers the full spectrum, I'd say, delicious. And it's witty uh, as well. I heard about the Great Flood. What can I do to help? Start gathering the animals and heterosexual pairs? Don't even joke. I have visions of Gina cooking in a life jacket. Hold on. Three, two, one, action. Where's Mimi? Still sleeping. Where have you been? Mason's. Oh, the best sex in the world doesn't change the fact that he is a snake. It's more than sex. So go for it. You don't need my blessing. I do, actually. Because if you can't forgive him, I'm not sure I can. You owe me. Excuse me? You know what you did. And it's time to make amends. I don't think that's a good idea. Gina would kill me. <laughs> that's really not my problem. On the outside, Sam appears to be very confident. Um, and then inside, I think she's actually quite emotionally fragile. She needs to believe that she is lovable and that she's worth somebody being faithful to. But then can someone who is used to being so independent share her life with someone again. Gina feels, like she does with many people, that she would know that person better than they would know themselves. And in Sam's case, I think Gina <laughs> might be right. 
beautiful place you have here. I'd be happy to give you a tour at some point. Sounds good. I mean, I think it's showing women's sex life and love life in a very honest way. Mark Wilson, heart as big as a bus. He releases something in Sam because he allows her to be the person that she used to be. <laughs> Mark gets a huge kick out of seeing Sammy evolve in that way and she really blossoms with this newly acquainted friendship. Gina puts their roles quite simply in this series. She says that she's the creative, she runs the kitchen, and Sam is the business, and she runs front of house. Gina is happy to leave things as they are, but Sam wants to expand the business, so there come some difficulties between them there, but they are so much more than business partners. Hope you didn't do anything I wouldn't do. Gina's fiery, quite liberated and quite greedy, quite selfish, and self-interested. And she's a nurturer at the same time. So she is an interesting mix, if you like. And that's really why I was drawn to her in the first place. Six, so eight, take one. They quarrel all the time, as they always have, but I do feel that it is within a boundary of love and friendship. It's part of the pattern of their relationship. <laughs> it's not funny. Well, maybe it's a little bit funny. <laughs> when it does work well, it's wonderful. When they rub up against each other, it's painful. Sam, listen, I always knew you were capable of some pretty underhanded things, but this, I mean, what kind of person are you? I can explain. There is no possible explanation. And I think that's an important element of Delicious, making relationships with people you find challenging. The absolute bloody cheek of him. We really do have the same taste in bastards. Teresa is appealing to a younger audience because I think that what she goes through and what she has gone through in the past two series is so, so relatable, particularly for young women. So Teresa, she's trying to have a better relationship with her mother in particular. Um, she's trying to be more open, trying to be more honest, trying to get closer to Gina because she needs her probably now more than ever. You know, the best things in life are not the things we plan. It's the stuff that sideswipes you on a wet Wednesday night. You might be surprised. They're much more on the same level. I think Teresa's letting her in this year more than she has done in the past. Um, and Gina loves that. <laughs> Teresa has grown up. She's learnt a lot, she has some secrets, and there are some things going on in series three that she is uh, having to deal with. Just to clarify, I run the kitchen, you run front of house, and Teresa is my daughter. You need to fuck. You've got 15 minutes. You need to fuck. <laughs> That's a compliment, I'm allergic. I'm sick and tired of watching you obsessing about what isn't going right. Mimi is so straight um, with Sam that it hurts. She does bring experience. Um, she's been through a lot of things. She's, I think I have a line when I say, the things that have happened in my life would make your hair curl. In many ways, she's our leader. Um, because I've got a funny feeling that Mimi's mood and Mimi's well-being uh, dictates how everybody is. And I think that's probably often the case with the matriarch. If I can't bury my head in the sand, neither can you. She has a different relationship with everybody in the family and she is the holder of lots of secrets because she's a safe harbour and she will not uh, betray you, uh, but she might advise you whether you want to hear that or not. You've been a liar, a serial cheat, and the arrogant, self-centered bastard that everybody says. Well, Leo's presence is ever felt um, as the narrative voice uh, of the show and also the heartbeat, I think. He's, he's kind of conjured by the, the other characters, the main characters, by the people he were married to or the people who had his strong relationships, his, his children. 
I always knew when she was upset with me, the lycra would come out. I just really like the, 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 the conceit of uh, Leo as this narrator from Beyond the Grave. Come on, I did, it. I did say all the words. This will finally put Chilstock on Cornwall's culinary map. We're already on the map. You drew the map. Cornwall is in this series in every way. The light of Cornwall is what infuses every, every shot. We've shot on beautiful beaches and on top of cliffs. and it's, it's breathtaking. I forget that I'm acting sometimes and just look at it and think, my God, this is so lovely, you know. It's, it's beautiful. I think the setting is, is, uh, makes for good drama in itself in that it has a bit of everything. You know, it's obviously coastal, but because it's two coasts, there's a very pretty side to it, but quite a dramatic side to it as well. Cornwall and our returning locations are a huge part of this show, but there are also new ones to see. Long, beautiful beach that I ran up and down all morning. You know, these are big, endless skies that we have here. And if you don't pocket some of that into this drama, you're, you're crazy. And so that's why we have lots of big, sh wide shots so you can establish where we are and you can know the kind of air that these characters are breathing. It's about people, it's about people, but it is particularly British, you know, but I've always been a great believer that if you localize something, oddly, it becomes universal. It's funny, it's insightful, it's clever, it's got really good characters. There's a lavishness, there's a glamour to it, which I think is wonderful. I, I like that sort of telly where you see people in nice dresses and looking wonderful. Fun pranks and some good old-fashioned romance. Yeah, I just think it's a very clever mix. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. My lover stands on golden sands and watches the ships let go sail. The kind of person who should watch this show is, well, it should be a human being, first of all. A living, breathing human being who'd like to have their sensuality buds tickled awake and who'd like to engage with characters who will challenge you a little bit. Just when you think you know them, maybe you don't quite.